It's my honor, as commander of the New York Life American Legion Post 503, to speak on behalf of all the members, as well as the members of our employee resource group, not events. Before we go any further, as usual, I want to acknowledge our friends and neighbors from down the block, the fighting 69th Infantry Regiment. Gentlemen, we appreciate your efforts on our behalf, Sarge, men, and, and we are eternally grateful for your commitment to our country. So thank you again. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not give a special thank you to our CEO, Mr. Mathis, in attendance, in attendance here. Sir, for uh, not only allowing this to happen today, take time out of our busy schedules, for this particular ceremony, but for fostering an environment here in New York Life, wherever it occurs to hold events like this. Thank you, sir, very much. Appreciate that. I have to point out as well that New York Life does so much more on behalf of our military. And I'll just tell you a couple things here. Currently, the New York Life Foundation and the Corporate Responsibility Department are supporting the Wounded Warrior Project, as well as another wonderful program best known by its acronym, TAPS. Now, TAPS stands for Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. And the organization is dedicated to helping families who are grieving the loss of a loved one in the military. And as you may have seen on our company's website, I know I scoured it, uh, earlier this week, the foundation made a donation to grant a grant of $325,000 to support tax bereavement services at its 19th annual military survivor seminar and good grief camp for young survivors that is taking place in Washington, D.C. over the over the weekend. And I believe Anna, you were attending? Anna will be attending that, volunteering her time down here as well. So I think she deserves a round of applause. Folks, a grant like that couldn't be more timely or appropriate. It's, it's a reflection of New York Life's value of humanity. It really is. And it truly ties into what Memorial Day is all about. It's the day we set aside to remember and honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice to our country. The men and women we've lost throughout history gave their lives so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we readily take for granted. That's not to say, and don't take this wrong, that's not to say we shouldn't go out and enjoy our barbecues and ball games and whatever else we do this weekend. But over the next few days, if you find yourself griping, maybe about the cost of gas, gas is too much or your beer is not cold enough, or that you had to sell for a hamburger because they were all out of hot dogs and Vegemite sandwiches, uh, men at work fans out there? Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I ask you to please step back and be cognizant of the bigger picture. Because the freedom we enjoy does come with a price. We know that. As I was preparing for today's talk, and I'll be brief, folks. Ted, I know you have to get back to work, sir. I found myself reflecting on a question that comes to mind periodically. What possesses young men and women barely out of their childhood years, let's be honest? to consider joining the military. And I suppose there are obvious reasons, with socioeconomic factors factoring in largely, socioeconomic matters, all right? There's also no question some young people are looking for direction. And the military is certainly a good place to find some, right? That's right, look straight ahead. In my own case, family heritage loomed large. Growing up, I can remember being completely enthralled while listening to my father's stories of World War II, and there were plenty of them. And I know my fellow Legion members, Mike Murphy, Bob Aubrey, Mike Gill, Frank Martinez, whose fathers also served honorably, can share similar memories. I couldn't wait to join the Army straight out of high school, and I'm proud that my sons have carried on the tradition as well. Todd Jr., Served as a paratrooper in the Army's 82nd Airborne, my oldest son. And not to be outdone, his younger brother, uh, Clint, was a rifleman with the 2nd Marine Infantry Division. A little sick 
same right with Greg and Summer. They work it out. They're both pretty dark. Uh, but let's get, let's get back to my original question. Why do young people literally put themselves in the line of fire? With the very real possibility that they would be injured or killed. Why? And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that no one can really answer that question on behalf of anyone else. Just, you can't. But I can say that regardless of the reason, those who choose to serve know the dangers as these gentlemen here do. They know the dangers. They're brave men. And this holiday, as I said earlier, is our chance to acknowledge those honorable souls who lost their lives, most at a very young age. We can never forget them. We can never forget them. All right, and as has become a habit of mine in my new career as public speaker, know that, I've taken to the internet, as usual, seeking inspiration from others. This year, I, I was able to cull this fine piece from an unknown author that I thought was very fitting, and I'd like to share it with you now. It is the veteran, not the preacher, who gave us freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who gave us freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. All true statements. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, and it is the veteran who sometimes is laid to rest under the flag. So in closing, I want to again thank our friends and neighbors who invited us tonight. Don't want to forget to thank Jim Hankel back here from the FDNY in 1916, the local firehouse. A little round of applause for Jim. Jim, did you work your spot there? A little bit? I think so. All right, the New York Life Singers again. Beautiful job, guys. Thank you so much. And thank you all for coming to the ceremony. I told you I'd keep it short. I hope you bring your patriotism to your family and friends and remind them what this holiday is all about. Have a great weekend. Thank you.